Hi folks, uh, hope you're enjoying the bearish momentum in the markets right now. I know I'm enjoying it because I've been waiting for this for months. So obviously I'm mostly bearish and all my trades are bearing fruit, so all good. The reason I'm making this video today is, uh, as you know, I posted a video last week sharing that I'm developing an algorithm to take my rules that I already have in place, give it to a computer and let it run uh, those rules and trade for me. Of course, the goal eventually is that as my uh, trading algorithm takes its trades, it closes its trades, it sends those alerts to our Discord server and our members can benefit from it. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that being a human being, I'm susceptible to emotions and biases, but the trading algorithm doesn't care about any of that. As long as the rules that I give to the algorithm are correct, it will keep trading it. So the reason I'm making this second video in this series is to share with you how I'm going to backtest my algorithm and what kind of results am I seeing already. Now, this is my coding environment and you'll see hundreds and hundreds of lines of code. Now, if you're not a programmer, you probably don't care about any of this, but if you are a programmer, um, you will see the amount of effort I've been putting into this. On the right side, I have my different classes. In, in this case here, in this section, I have different algorithms that I'm developing. Now, if I have, uh, the first algorithm I'm developing is the trend following strategy, which I'm gonna show you the back test right now. But then I'll be developing all the others too, like uh, EMA crossover, mean reversion, support resistance, uh, TTM squeeze, and it, it could have many others, but I think this is sufficient for me to go live. So that's what uh, you are seeing on the right side. Now, if you uh, let me go up in this code, don't worry if you don't understand coding, no problem just focus on this part so this this uh, environment that i'm using this uh, framework so this is what you do you uh, give it some cash this is back testing by the way so what it will uh, for with back testing you write the code then you give the code some cash fake cash obviously this is back testing right then you give it a time range and what the environment, in this case, Quant Connect, will do for you is it will run your code based on the data it has from that time period. So if you request hourly data or minute data, it will simulate time passing by and keep calling your algorithm and let it do its job. And then it will record the results. So in this case, the only three things I want you to focus, even if you're not a programmer, you should be able to see this, that I'm telling it set start date as 2022-21. In fact, let me just do this. Let me, since uh, you must clearly remember how this year has been, I'm gonna change it to 2024, Jan, uh, January 1st of this year, and let, let me run uh, until 6-1, 2024. So, six months in this year i'm giving it ten thousand dollars in cash now i have some certain other parameters like how much money it's allowed to trade so my i'll start this algorithm here by 10 percent of my trading portfolio so 10 percent of one ten thousand is one thousand dollars and then one thousand dollars will be divided into four weeks so $250 per week will be given to my algorithm to trade. So that's all you need to worry about right now. What I'll do is when I run this, I just want to show you how this environment behaves and what are the nuances or shortcomings of this environment and why it's taking me so much time. So all I have to do is just run and drink some coffee. so now it will start running my algorithm at the bottom you will see some messages and the thing is 
you are a programmer you will understand this that these messages are coming from my code so by reading these messages i have to figure out if my code is doing the right thing or not so the rules i have given it is it following or not that's the only way you can do it and there's no other way so let it finish then i will tell you like what exactly am i looking for so it's doing its job it's so uh, what this platform does is it shows you your starting equity it shows you your returns holdings and kind of your equity curve how many positions has your bot opened throughout its lifetime all that stuff but unfortunately none of this is helpful because uh this platform quant connect uh yes it understands options but it doesn't understand spreads and because of that all the reporting it's giving you is based on individual legs so the profit loss reporting everything is off so i'll, I'll tell you one um, example i'll show you one example why so let me click on this uh, overview section so now it's telling me algorithm is done it opened 82 trades in those 6 months okay average win is 4.6% very low win rate sharp ratio minus 1 which is really bad sharp ratio needs to be positive but here's the problem so win rate is 44% loss is 56% so it's reporting all this would would be nice if it understood what my trading method is and then report based on that so i wouldn't have to do all this myself but uh now let me show you why it's all wrong and how i have to figure out what exactly my code is doing so when i if i go to this logs section so you will see when the algorithm started so there are 77 pages of information that my algorithm has spit out in those 6 months so as me uh, as a programmer i have to go through each line to figure out if it's doing what i expect to do starting so it so let's see what happens in the beginning so on this is the date right here you can also see the date here 2024 january 2 Tuesday if you remember my algorithm will trade only on Tuesday and Friday it will manage trades every day of the week but it will open trades only on Tuesday and Friday okay so on Tuesday it it's allowed five spreads per week now on January 2nd it's saying market bias is if you remember the way i'm coding it is exactly how how i trade in real life so the way i trade if you are on discord you know that first i will form a market bias then i will look for trades in that direction if i'm bullish i will look for bearish i will look for bullish trades if i'm bearish i will look for bearish trades so the algorithm works exactly the same way so in this case on january 2nd it says i am bullish spy is trending upwards so it's also taking into account the direction in which spy is going up so it has a bullish bias now it's going to look for bullish trades now in this case on this is tuesday tuesday i don't see it open any trades the funds allocated to the algorithm 137 and it did open a trade in which case it says this is the message open trade SPY 476 477 call spread it spits out every time it's opening a trade now i'll just instead of overwhelming you with all these log statements uh, what i'll do is now i'll just focus on the trades it opened during the entire duration i ran the test so what i will do is i'll filter my logs on this message open trade so now you can see January twelfth is the first trade it opened, and the last trade was opened on May twenty eighth. Now here's here is one thing. If you must remember, the reason I'm showing you this year is you know how this year has been. Let me pull up a chart to show you how this year has been. Okay, so this is January first. Notice how this year has played out. So from January first, all the way till. i would say april 4th markets went ballistic 
they've just gone up, 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 up. Zero pullbacks. Then we got a minor correction. And then they went again up all the way until July. Using this chart, now let's tally what my algorithm is doing and how the markets have behaved. First trade is on January 12th, SPY 476, 477 call spread. So this is 112. Look at this. It should be very obvious to you that this trade was successful. Next, 116. 116. Another call spread. 123 another call spread so if you keep going down let's see where it stops taking call spreads so on 42 now let's match this with the chart until 42 april 2nd markets are bullish and the algorithm keeps taking bullish trades continuously now what happens is on 423 it has taken its first bearish trade now in this case, if you'd notice, obviously this trade wouldn't have panned out because the market actually shot up after that. And, but it doesn't matter because we're not looking for a 100% win rate. We are looking for more winners than losers. That's all you need for trading. You need more winners than losers. So let's see on 4-2 what happened. I'm just filtering this right now, uh, my logs. Um, for the trades that were open, but let's see what other messages my algorithm has put out during that time. So I've switched to 4.2. On Tuesday, the algorithm was still bullish and you can see the charts were still bullish until that time too. So it did open, it had a bullish market bias. So it did open a trade on that trade, another call spread. Now, of course, I feel bad for the algorithm because it doesn't know what's coming its way because there was a, I would say, deep pullback that followed in April. But at least at that time, it's doing what I'm telling it to do. Now let's keep going forward and see what it is doing. So on 4-5, this is, this is what I want to show you. This is really interesting. Look at this message. On 4-5, it's saying flash crash detected. So when market suddenly started pulling back, the algorithm was able to catch that. And when that happens, you can see in this message, it says initiating slow closing of losing bullish trades. So yesterday I put in this logic into my trading algorithm. So if a flash crash ever happens, it doesn't um, register huge losses. In fact, the way I've done it is it's actually uh, makes money more money than it loses when a flash crash happens so it's it detected the flash crash sudden drop in the markets it's instead of panic closing all the trades using stop losses what it does is it initiates a slow closing mechanism of any bullish trade that are underwater so only the ones that are actually are losing it will start slowly closing them over a, over the next few days also, one interesting thing that I do is, let me go through the logs a little bit further. I'll show you something here. On April 7th, it says market bias for week starting this is bullish. And look at this. It says flash crash detected forced bullish outlook. So if I didn't have this flash crash mechanism in place, what would happen is as soon as the EMAs turn negative the algorithm would start buying bearish positions and notice that in this case what happens is if i had taken any bear put spreads here it would like they would end up losing because the markets uh, shot back up after that so the way i've done uh, this is when a sudden drop happens in the markets it initiates a slow closing protocol of any losing bullish trades and then it takes on a bullish bias on the markets. Now just because it's taking on a bullish bias doesn't mean it's going to start taking bullish trades. It will start looking for bullish trades and only if this criteria is satisfied it will take bullish trades. Now let's filter this log, remove all the noise and let's again walk back 
to the trade it had opened. So on, if you remember on 4.2, it was the last call spread. After 4.2, it went into a bullish mode and it stopped opening trade because it's waiting, although its bias is bullish, it's waiting for markets to turn around to it. It can start taking bullish trades. Now, of course, May 10th, it opened a call spread again. So let's go to May 10th. So look, if you look at the chart, the moment markets went into a pullback, it started closing its trades. Then it started looking for bullish setups. And it doesn't matter how long it takes to find the bullish setup. It's not gonna, it's not in a hurry. It will just keep waiting. And that happened on 5.10. And from that point on, it started taking bullish trades again. And if you look at all the trades taken after that, they're all bullish. So for the first six months, there's only one put spread and all call spreads. And if you look at this run this year, every single of these call spreads would have turned profitable. So that's why I'm so excited about this. And I just wanted to share this uh, very short video with you because I will be publishing more back test results with you starting from 2020. I do want to go over the COVID crash and any flash crashes that uh, the markets have seen in the last four years. I want to go through those scenarios. And of course, I also want to go through the entire year and see how the algorithm is doing. So the results are looking really promising. And um, I just want uh, our group to stay excited about this as much as I am. And so I'll continue sharing these with you going forward. So that's all I have for you in this video. Look forward to my back testing videos coming soon in the following weeks. And hopefully I can get this up and running in a couple of months and it'll be a really good addition to our group.